welcome in this lecture we'll see about a convective heat transfer and its mechanisms particularly how to understand it from a molecular point of view a convection phenomena by convection we mean a motion of a mean motion of a packet of fluid in contrast to conduction where we talked about uh, random motion here it is the mean motion so suppose if you consider a packet of fluid and I'll, we look at what is happening to the molecules inside they all have a mean motion apart from that they might have some random motion uh, uh, along with them but along with the random motion there is also a mean motion in this case it's an upward motion so the heat uh, transported is carried by this bulk flow the mean motion u denotes the velocity mean velocity of the bulk uh, motion and the amount of heat that is transported depends on the temperature of this packet that is the random motion of molecules inside the packet then it also depends on the uh, uh, fluid velocity and the number of molecules inside each packet Uh, let us uh, uh, resolve some misconceptions, the typical misconceptions that we have about uh, uh, convection. So in our school textbooks, you might have studied convection as uh, in the context of atmospheric uh, physics, where you have uh, hot uh, air raising and cold uh, air coming down. So that is just one form of convection in heat transfer, which is known as a natural or a free convection. So convection can be by other means as well, which we will see, which is something called as a force convection. But um, when we mean convection, it is not just atmospheric convection, but a, the general definition is that you have a mean motion of a packet of a fluid. Now, the second misconception about convection is that convection cannot occur in still air. Uh, technically, yes, but practically, no. So when you say, when you enter a room, when there is no fan, all the windows are closed, doors are closed, you will think that the air is still. It is still, but uh, actually, there is small random motion because the walls are not ideal. There'll be some te temperature fluctuations in the uh, air inside. And these small temperature fluctuation can cause a uh, flow and it can also become turbulent. So what you see here is uh, smoke from a perfume uh, incense stick. So although it seems to be still here, but later with small variations in uh, temperature can cause a huge uh, random fluctuations and therefore convey. So this is all by convection. This is all fluid packets. This is not each fluid packet is having a random motion and inside that random uh, sorry, mean motion and inside that packet, you also can have random motion of the molecules. Now, one of the reasons we smell perfume in a room. So if you have a perfume in a room, one corner of a room, you open the bottle and you are able to get the per smell of the perfume in say uh, less than five minutes or so if you're sitting on the other corner. And it is not because the perfume has diffused from that place to your place. Although in common parlance, we'll say that perfume is diffusing from there to here. But technically in terms of uh, uh, transport phenomena, it is not diffusion, but it is actually convection. And that convection comes because of this uh, mean motion of uh, air which carries perfume from one end of the room to the other end. If you actually think of uh, diffusion, if you make calculations, you will find that uh, diffusion takes uh, several years to reach your nose, even if you sit about a couple of meters away. So it is certainly not diffusion, it is by convection. Okay. Now let us look at practical aspects of convective heat transfer. So we defined what convection is. Now let us look at what is uh, convective heat transfer. So there are four dominant modes of convective heat transfer, forced, natural, boiling, and condensation. So in forced convection, you have a fan which drives a fluid, 
which is typically a liquid or a, a gas along a solid. So the solid either generates heat or takes the heat from the um, fan. So in this case, uh, the mean motion of uh, the uh, liquid takes heat away from this and goes out. So there is a convective transport of heat from here outside. In the case of natural convection, it is very similar, except that instead of something which is forcing like a fan, you have buoyancy driven. So if you have high temperature here and low temperature here, you have buoyancy driven flow or it's called as a natural convection. Then you have boiling con convection in which uh, there is a phase change. So there is a phase change. Apart from phase change, there is also a motion of these bubbles inside the uh, liquid which carry heat. Then there is condensation where um, gas condenses to a liquid and there is a mean motion of this uh, uh, condensed liquid outside. So these are the four dominant uh, modes of convective heat transfer. The key feature in all of them is that there is a fluid solid interface. So there is a fluid which is moving and comes in contact with a solid which is at a lower temperature or at higher temperature, takes heat or gives heat to this solid. To understand uh, convective heat transfer, we need to understand what is known as a boundary layer. So you might have been introduced to boundary layers in uh, earlier courses, and you will learn more about the boundary layers in fluid mechanics and in heat transfer. But what we are going to give now is more of a pictorial depiction of what a boundary layer is. So first, let us see a boundary layer in case of a fluid flow without any heat transfer. That is, the fluid is isothermal and everywhere the temperature is uniform. So why does why do we have a boundary layer? So you have a solid here and there is a fluid that is going past it. So at very close to the surface, the fluid has a no slip condition that, that there is no flow here. The velocity is zero. Whereas very far away, the fluid is not affected by the presence of solid and this velocity is equal to this inlet velocity. So that inlet velocity is U0 and here it is zero. So a region, if you can see this, in this region, the velocity goes from zero to U0. So here all it is U0. But here, it goes from 0 to u naught. So this region in which the velocity goes from 0 to u naught is called as the boundary layer. And this is the edge of the plate. At the edge of the, uh, the leading edge of the plate, so at this edge, the boundary layer is 0. And slowly, the boundary layer grows and reaches a maximum value. Now, the way this, the character features of this boundary layer depends on the Reynolds number. So very high. A Reynolds number, you have turbulent flow and the boundary layer can be can become turbulent. At low Reynolds number or very close to the surface, the flow is always laminar and you have a laminar boundary layer. A similar, so if you, if you have a, a, a showing the velocity vectors, so at the inlet, the velocity is all U0. And at the surface, the velocity is zero. So the velocity goes from zero to a maximum of u naught. And after that, it is all u naught. So this region, uh, uh, as you go down, the distance over which it becomes zero to u naught also increases. So th this thickness is called as a boundary layer thickness. So the boundary layer thickness here is small. That is, going from zero to u naught is over a shorter distance. Here, it is over a longer distance. So the boundary layer thickness increases. So what you say here is actually the boundary layer thickness, which increases as you go along the length of the plate. Boundary layers can also be seen along curved surfaces. So 
here the boundary layer uh, can uh, develop in this case it will have a uh, at the surface you have zero velocity far away you have uh, u not but the small region over which it becomes from zero to u not so that is the boundary layer here so the motion of cricket ball golf golf balls all depends on because of the flow that is different in this boundary layer so if you want to understand spin for example the different kinds of spins that you see in uh, cricket balls off spin leg spin uh, uh, swingers uh, off swingers and in swingers they are all because of differences in the boundary layer flow a similar analogy can be taken for heat transfer as well now let us assume that the there is a fluid that is entering here at some temperature let's say t not and there is a surface here which is as a temperature ts so very far away the fluid temperature is unaffected by the solid temperature so very far away the temperature is t not and very close to the surface which is the red color here the temperature is ts and there is a region over which the velocity the temperature goes from ts to t not so what you see here is an animation carried out at different velocities at very high velocity the boundary layer becomes very thin at low velocity you have a large boundary layer so this is a boundary layer in the temperature so just as the velocity went from 0 to u not temperature goes from t to t t not ts to t not so uh, this is called as a thermal boundary layer what we saw earlier was the momentum boundary layer or the velocity boundary layer here it is the thermal boundary layer where it goes from t to t not to ts now thermal boundary layer can be different from the velocity boundary layer so what you see here is both the boundary layers that are shown here so you have this leading edge and here both the boundary layers are uh, boundary layer thickness is zero so this is the the dot small dash and large dash lines are the boundary layer thickness so over this length velocity goes from zero to u not whereas the temperature has reached t not in a shorter distance right because the boundary layer thickness here is temperature boundary layer thickness is so much velocity boundary layer thickness is so much the temperature has attained uh, t not in a shorter distance so the boundary layer thicknesses need not be the same and this leads to different kind of phenomena now this is the background of uh, convective heat transfer uh the mechanism but a more detailed mechanism we will learn much later what you need to remember for calculation purposes is that the heat transfer from the solid to the uh fluid heat transfer rate is given by h times ts minus t not where ts is the surface temperature t not is this now this h is called as the convective heat transfer coefficient so this let us try to understand little more about this expression q double prime which is uh, energy uh, watt per meter square the energy rate per area is h times delta t delta t is ts minus t not where ts minus t not is the temperature drop across this boundary layer thickness delta so try let's try to understand what is happening here from a molecular point of view so let us for simplicity consider laminar boundary layers where there is no intermixing between the layers so if there is no intermixing how will heat get transported from here to here it is only by random thermal motions predominantly by random thermal motions because these molecules here if it has to convey heat to this 
it will, uh, let's assume there's a liquid here. So there'll be a random motion here and a slower random motion here and a very slow random motion here. So the, the way heat can transport from here to here is purely by diffusion of heat or conduction of heat. So if you assume that there is only conduction of heat here, then this Q double prime is approximately equal to K times delta T by delta Z. Okay, the dt by dz I have written as delta t by delta z, and delta t over if you if you take delta z is equal to this delta, okay, if this is the boundary layer thickness, if that you take it as delta, so and the delta t corresponding to this delta is nothing but t s minus t naught, so this heat flux. K times dt by dz is written as K by delta times this. So it's approximately this. So this is what, this K by delta is what we call it as heat transfer coefficient. So this is just to give an analogy. This is not, you cannot substitute this in any formula to estimate heat transfer coefficient, but this is a very good approximation to understand the mechanism and to get some estimates. The actual heat transfer coefficient depends on several other things which you will learn much later. But for the moment, uh, you just need to remember this. For the initial problems, uh, heat, tra heat transfer coefficient will be given to you. But what we are showing here is the mechanism of the uh, convective heat transfer. To summarize, convective heat transfer uh, is a transfer of heat between a fluid and a solid and it happens due to the mean motion, not the random motion, mean motion of particles in the fluid. Thank you. There are some things that I'd like you to uh, think about. If convection is a bulk motion, how can a fluid moving parallel to a surface carry heat away from it? Okay. Should it not be only when heat is flowing perpendicular to it? So we know that if there is a flow in horizontal direction, the heat should be carried out in the horizontal direction. But uh, we, we say that heat is going in the perpendicular direction. So what is the fallacy here? Try to think about it. We cannot have fluid uh, going perpendicular because there is no uh, vertical motion near a fluid, uh, near a plat, fl flat plate. Thank you.